I may have just bought something. <laughs> but first, before we get into too many crazy things, stop number one is with our friends, Naysayer. I've had this dream for over two years now of living in a bus and this is different from what the, the, the full dream looks like but this is the first step. This, <laughs> this is crazy man. This is so, okay I'll just, gotta show, I'll just show you first and then we'll go in and, and I'll talk about my plan. Oh this is wild. Number 16, here's that wheelchair entrance I talked about. We got some good, good double doors. Still a couple seats left. Here's that wheelchair lift. Oh man. Oh. This bus is not going to be a full-time sustainable living solution. Uh, what I mean by that is that I'm not trying to move into this and live in it. Maybe at some point in three years, uh, I'll try to use it like that. But for now, here's what this bus is gonna be. It's gonna be the mid-length road trip vehicle, gear hog, adventure wagon, whatever you wanna call it. Some friends from PUC are down here for a surf weekend, so they're gonna be driving my car back. But that means I get to drive from here the four hours back to Angwin. I am nervous. My stomach hurts because of that. It might hurt because I haven't eaten since breakfast, but it also hurts because I'm, if I don't make back, well, there's just too many variables. I don't know. We're gonna go get this thing on. We're gonna get on the road and we're gonna make it home. Thank goodness, I was able to stop that incessant alarm sound. Turns out it was the emergency exit noise because the handle on my, on my skylight exit box was just slightly eschewed from when I opened it earlier. Thank, whoa, man, I was going insane. I was freaking out. I didn't know what was going on. Fixed that, made it over the hill from Santa Cruz. Now I'm in the San Jose Valley, um, man. One, I have to pee. Two, I haven't eaten since breakfast. Three, part of me is just too, too nervous to stop this vehicle to eat or pee. So I might just be hauling all the way back. I was driving back and my battery died. So now I've called every parts store nearby and they none of them deliver batteries. So I'm gonna go find a battery. That's gonna be great. Hopefully I don't have to come get picked up and then come back and figure it out later. <sighs> and here we pick up where I left off on Friday night. Last I recorded, I was sitting in a Shell gas station. My bus had just died. I'd barely rolled in to a parking spot and I had called all the, ba all the, all the parts stores in the area to see if any of them would deliver a battery. I even called a business called Car Battery Delivery 24 hours a day. They said, oh, sorry, we don't have a battery for your, for your vehicle. And the next thing for me to do was to set off and try and find a battery for myself because I knew that that could get me at least closer to being home. I grabbed all my things and started walking and I walked across the street, came upon a taco truck. For a second I thought, wow, tacos would be great. And then I realized, 
I can't even think about food right now. I'm way too nervous to eat anything. By then it had been about 10 hours or so since I'd eaten breakfast. So I was in, I was hungry. I stood there for a second. I looked around. I thought, ah, oh, I better just walk. Turned around. After a couple steps, I said, what the heck? I just need to hitchhike a ride. I can't just walk around carrying a car battery. So I turn around, I walk up to a table where there's three people sitting and I say, would any of you be able to drive me to O'Reilly's? They look at each other and say, um, well, O'Reilly's is quite a ways down that, the, down, down that way and we're, we're going the opposite direction. There was a husband and wife and their son. Turns out he works for Apple, kind of cool. The wife says, well, isn't there an O'Reilly's this way? We're going to Target and there's an O'Reilly's right there by Target. And I said, mm-hmm. There, there's an O'Reilly's out there. I looked up the parts stores. There's one there, there's one over there. I can go to any of them. Hop in our car, we'll drive you to O'Reilly's. Sounds good. About a five minute drive, we chit chatted the whole way, told them about myself, told them what I do, told them that I just bought a bus and that I'm gonna build it out and use it as a, as a camper RV kind of thing. And they were like, wow, that's so cool, that's amazing. You know, all this stuff. Um, so we pull up to O'Reilly's. I thought they were just gonna kind of drop me off on the sidewalk and I would either walk back or find another ride. But they said, oh no, we'll wait for you. Just run in, grab your, grab your stuff, and we'll drive you back. Don't worry about it. I was like, wow. You know, so I ran in, grabbed a battery, grabbed a tool so we can loosen the, the battery connectors, and got back in the car. They drove me back kept chatting the whole way, unhooked the old battery, tossed a new one in there, hooked it up, wow! And the bus fired right up, it was running. And all three of them were like, yeah, sweet! And I was like, hey, man! You know, um, so I thanked them, gave them all hugs. Luis, Jose, Maria, if you guys are watching, thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know how to thank you enough. Um, if it wasn't for you guys, I will probably wouldn't have made it home or at least the bus wouldn't have made it home on Friday night. You guys were a blessing to me in that situation. You changed my night, you changed my weekend, and I don't know how to thank you enough. Anyways, so the bus is running, but I knew that with a bad alternator, a new battery will only get me so far. So I got in that sucker and I got driving and I got on the road as quick as I could and tried to make it home before the battery would die again. I was stuck in traffic for about an hour, which means there's no shoulder on the right, there's no shoulder on the left. If I would have died there, I'd have been stranded in the worst possible space. Every town I would get to, I'd say, yeah, Walnut Creek, Pleasanton, Concord, Fairfield, making it, getting closer. Ended up making it all the way up the hill and parked it in the back by the barn. I didn't make it back till about 9.30, so at that time I had been without food for 14 hours. So between the anxiety and the stress and the lack of food, I was feeling it. I came in and I sat down and just breathed a huge sigh of relief while I nuked some leftovers. What a day. What a wild day. On Sunday, my dad and I decided that it's probably best that we take it to a Ford uh, mechanic and have them do a good look over, do the alternator, make sure it's all in ship shape electrically, mechanically, because I need this thing to be rock solid. We put it on a trickle charger overnight so that it would actually charge up and then have enough battery to start and make it down to St. Helena where we have the nearest Ford dealership. So trickle charged it. It started right up Sunday morning, drove it down to St. Helena, and that's where we stand now. I bought a bus. The bus died. The bus was resurrected. And now the bus is in the shop. That was a long story. If you made it this far, I thank you a lot for watching. And I don't know for sure or not if I'm gonna you know, include a lot of this bus content here on the channel. If that's something that you wanna see, if that's something you're excited about following along with, let me know in the comments, let me know on Facebook or Instagram, shoot me a message. Tell me that, that you are stoked about seeing this content. And I am stoked to see where this goes, to see where it takes me and to take every one of you guys on a little tour or on a little road trip in the bus. Thank you very much for watching. Like this video, subscribe to it if you wanna keep following along. I will update you on the bus 
as more developments happen. As always, thank you very much. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you.